stands for Electronic Voice Phenomena. They are ghostly disembodied voices caught on tape. Sometimes they are heard by the person doing the recording. Other times, however, they are discovered upon review of the tape. Today, we count down five creepy EVP recordings. Myrtle's Plantation Built in 1796 by General David Bradford, this stately old home on Myrtle's Plantation is said to be haunted by several restless ghosts. Some researchers say as many as 10 murders have been committed there, but others such as Troy Taylor and David Weishart have only been able to confirm one murder at Myrtle's. Even they agree, however, that the place is seriously haunted and easily qualifies as one of the most haunted. Some of the restless souls that still haunt this house include Chloe, a former slave who was allegedly hung on the premises for killing two little girls. The ghosts of the two murdered children have been seen playing on the veranda. William Drew Winter, an attorney who lived at Myrtle's from 1860 to 1871, he was shot on the side porch of the house by a stranger. With his life's blood pouring from his body, Winter staggered into the house and began to climb the stairs to the second floor, but he didn't make it. He collapsed and died on the 17th step. It is his last dying footsteps that can still be heard on the staircase to this day. Now at bed and breakfast, the Myrtle's plantation has opened its doors to guests who often report disturbances in the night. Apart from ghost pictures taken at the site, as well as other disturbances around the property, one of the most chilling happenings includes several EVPs recorded on the property. Take a listen to the following EVPs. Do you live here? Do you live here? The Ridges On January the 9th of 1874, the Athens Lunatic Asylum opened its doors on more than 1,000 acres on the former Coates Farm. Many mental institutions sprouted up across the country during this time period due in large part of Civil War veterans who were suffering from what is now known as post-traumatic stress disorder. As asylums gained popularity in the 1900s, it became commonplace for families to drop off elderly relatives who they couldn't care for and rebellious teenagers. The homeless would use the institution for temporary shelter. By the early 1900s, the population of Athens Lunatic Asylum grew from 200 to 2000, leading to overcrowding and a decline in the quality of treatment. With a decrease in care and attention, Treatment led to primitive techniques, including water treatment, being submerged in the ice cold water for extended periods of time, and shock therapy, where electric shocks to patients submerged in water or directly to the temples from brine soaked electrodes. These options for treatment claimed the lives of many. The living conditions weren't much better. Patients shared bunks intended for one person and were often restrained. Patients spoke out by carving messages such as I was never crazy in the sandstone and wood trim. Of course, with such a history combined with numerous deaths that occurred at the asylum, the ridges are said to be extremely haunted. A ghost named Mary is said to walk the halls late at night, as do many other former patients. Witnesses have reported seeing darting shadows and people standing behind them in mirrors when no one else is there. The most well-known story of the ridges involves a female patient whose body left a permanent stain. On December 1, 1978, patient Margaret Schilling went missing from one of the remaining active wards. Margaret had free reign of the grounds and often wandered throughout the building. A search of the entire grounds was conducted but Margaret was never found. It wasn't until January 12, 1979 when a maintenance worker was moving some boxes in an abandoned ward N20 that Margaret's body was found. She had removed her clothing, stacked them neatly in a corner, and laid down on the cold concrete floor to die. 
The official report indicated that Margaret died of heart failure weeks before her body was discovered. When her body was removed, a stain outlining the places where her body touched the floor was left behind. The stain was believed to have been created by sunlight shining in through the windows, causing a chemical reaction between the body and the concrete during the decomposition. No amount of scrubbing was able to remove the stain, and it remains etched into the concrete floor to this day. The following are EVPs recorded at the ridges. Take a listen. Yeah, some of it. They used to have tags and stuff in there. Yeah, some of it. They used to have tags and stuff in there. Round it over. <laughs> I thought crazy. But different people have different stages of The Queen Mary. The keel was laid for the HMS Queen Mary in nineteen thirty at Clyde, Scotland but it was not completed until 1936. She made her maiden voyage on May the 27th of that same year. She served three years as a passenger liner carrying passengers across the Atlantic until war broke out in 1939. When the United States entered the war, she was converted to a troop ship, painted gray to make her more difficult to detect. Queen Mary was known as the Grey Ghost. She ferried troops from the US to England in preparation for D-Day. During this time, Queen Mary set the record for the most people on an ocean voyage at one time with 16,683 people. After the war, she continued to serve the military by transporting war brides and children from Europe to the United States. She made 13 voyages in this capacity before she was refurbished and returned to passenger liner service. By the 1960s, ocean liners were falling out of fashion with the rise of air traffic between the continents. After the Queen Mary made her final transatlantic crossing, she was permanently docked. Her boilers were removed and she was rendered unable to move under her own power. She was converted into a hotel and museum. There are numerous ghosts and hauntings reported on the Queen Mary. Stateroom B340 is no longer rented out because the volume of paranormal activity is just way too much. The faucets are set to turn on by themselves and sheets from the bed are said to have flown across the room. The room is now stark white with very little furniture in it. One of the most famous ghosts of the Queen Mary is believed to be that of John Petter a fireman in the engine room who was crushed by the infamous door 13 in the part of the ship known as Shaft Alley. Apparently, during emergencies, the watertight doors would be closed to seal off sections of the ship to avoid sinking. The legend goes that crew members would hop back and forth through the doorway as many times as they could before the door would close. John Petter apparently tried one too many times and was crushed by the closing door. A man seen wearing blue overalls, sometimes described as having a beard, has been seen walking down Shaft Alley and disappearing at door 13. On the Ghosts and Legends tour, they refer to this man as Half Hatch Harry, but that was not the real name. John Petter is listed on the sign in the infirmary of crew members that died. Take a listen to some of the EVPs recorded on the Queen Mary. Close. No way, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Get out. Go. Get out. Come close. No way. Montpelier Hill 
Standing just outside of Dublin, high in the mountains, built in an ancient cairn, and far away from the city that nighttime activities weren't going to raise any unwanted questions, is Montpellier Hill. Originally a hunting lodge, it was built in 1725 by a speaker in the Irish House of Commons named William Connolly. Unfortunately, Connolly decided to build his Grand Lodge on the side of an ancient cairn and used some of the burial stones in the construction of his home. According to the legend, those buried on the sacred ground didn't take kindly to the intrusion of the building, much less the events that later became famous for. The building seemed to be doomed from the start, not long after it was completed, the roof was blown off in a storm. Supposedly, it was a message that someone wasn't happy with its presence there. Unfortunately, Connolly died only a few years after he built the hunting lodge, and Montpellier Hill lay abandoned for several more years until it took on an even more ominous air as a meeting place for Dublin's Hellfire Club. According to the story, the members of the Hellfire Club set fire to Montpellier Hill before taking up residence there in order to give the building a more appropriately charred appearance. The setting needed to be a fitting one after all, for the satanic rituals and black masses. There are several ghosts in the building, one of whom likes to tug at jewellery worn around the neck, in particular religious symbols such as crucifixes. Several people on Dublin walking tours have reported their necklaces being pulled on by invisible hands, and in one case the chain was actually broken. The ghost of a woman screaming in anguish has also been reported. It is believed that she was murdered by being trapped in a barrel which was then set alight and rolled down the hill. Take a listen to some of the EVPs recorded at Montpellier Hill. Upstate New York Hotel. Now we can't say exactly where this last case was recorded due to the fact that the owners of the hotel have asked to keep its location confidential. In January 2007, the Central New York Ghost Hunters, based in Syracuse, New York, were invited to investigate an old hotel in upstate New York. The investigation proved to be one of the most intensively active the group has ever encountered and produce an EVP that is remarkable not only for its length but also for its terrifying content. It may well be the most intense and frightening EVP ever recorded. On that weekend in January, the Central New York Ghost Hunters founder Stacy Jones and several members of the group went to the hotel on an overnight stay for what they thought would be a routine investigation. They had no idea what they were in for. Originally built in the late 1800s, the building was in its colorful history the site of some nefarious activity, a fact that might be the key to what is heard in the EVP. On Friday night, Stacy and her group set up their equipment, audio recorders, video recorders and other electronics and settled in, hoping to document some evidence for the haunting the owner had claimed. Most investigations are relatively quiet but this night was filled with paranormal activity including muffled voices of unknown origin, footsteps from unseen bodies and more. The real shocker however came the next day. On Saturday afternoon about 3 p.m. two female investigators and a member of the owner's family who was also a female sat on the staircase of the hotel with a digital voice recorder intending to capture some EVP. They chose the stairway because they had heard soft conversations and footsteps on the floor above, although no one was up there. When they later played the recording back however, what they heard were not soft voices and footsteps, but something totally unexpected and completely terrifying. In this EVP you can faintly hear the three females talking throughout the recording. You will hear a female 
The family member say hello baby and another long conversation. Those are all human voices, but what sounds like a struggle or attack is also going on in the background. The male voice you hear was not present at the hotel. You will also hear a cuckoo clock which was not present at the time, a ticking of a hall clock which was there. You will also hear what sounds like a microphone being moved which was not being touched at all, and then the sound becomes clearer. You will then begin to hear a creaking door and slamming of the door which is real. Then you will hear an unknown woman say get off me and what sounds like the woman being attacked. The struggle continues for a while and during the EVP you can also hear some of the investigators conversations. Take a listen. Thanks a lot for watching, if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for weekly videos. Also keep in touch on all our social media sites, the links are down below. See you next time.